Joe Rogan is having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad week. So, we're about a week removed from Joe Rogan and his very bad, terrible, awful week. We'll just give it two weeks because... The hate, it grows, and <laughs> there's a lot going on. There's a lot of backlash, and I figured I would just give some commentary on it, show some things that you guys might find interesting. I'm the man you may know as he from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I'm here to bring you some info. We're going to give it a review. Maybe we'll, we'll rank it here. We're going to take a look at some stuff because I think you guys will find it pretty interesting. And now, it's not all one week because... I think it was about a week ago that his live show premiered, and I did review it up here. And, uh, well, I didn't think it was great, or I thought it was kind of mediocre. A lot of people really hated it, like really hated it. So, but that's only the beginning of the bad news, and I'll get to that at the end. I'm going to show you some something that could be the worst part of his special. But before we get there, let's take a look at some information here some news looks like looks like this tucker carlson podcast beats joe rogan and becoming the most listened podcast on spotify joe rogan loses his top spot things are going down 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 for him doesn't sound like a good good deal um everybody's reporting on it tucker carlson super uh joe rogan on si on spotify podcast numero uno yeah rounding out the top five call her daddy is always up there then there's Ta tana manju and brooks canceled dan bonagino show well apparently tucker is up there and he's killing it so just interesting that you know Joe's podcast, which I, I watched the most, one of the more recent ones with Michael Malice, and Joe is just falling for every boomer thing ever. And young Jamie keeps spot checking him, and it's just getting co confrontational. In fact, what we should check out here, we're going to go to, uh, da, 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 da. we'll go to this. Look at this. If you just search uh, Burn the Boats, You've got all these different videos. Comedy enforcement. Burn the Boats was bad. Uh, we're going to look watch a little bit who did a really fabulous job. The Elephant Graveyard. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of hate there. Um, a lot of people just breaking down his, his, his uh, special there. And I guess part of it is where people are mad too because he recycled some old jokes and and which is i i didn't know that before i did the review so how should i know that he was recycling old jokes um but he also has made a, a he, he made an endorsement or didn't make an endorsement he talked to somebody about how much he liked rfk jr saying he liked him but <laughs> almost sounded like an endorsement well, now he's drawn the ire of former President Donald Trump because uh, he was saying how great Robert F. Kennedy is. And I was, <laughs> I watched the commercial for RFK Jr. And I also did an impression of RFK Jr. on our last podcast about him and the bear. And uh, he ran a commercial that didn't even say he was running for president. It just said, RFK Jr.'s got the facts. And I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> whatever you want. You need some better commercials, bro. I uh, so he says this is Rogan talking for the record this isn't an endorsement this is like this is me saying that I like RFK Jr. as a person and I really appreciate the way he discusses things with civility and intelligence I think we can use more of that in the world <laughs> why even respond I don't I don't know I don't know whatever and then um Trump had things to say like, oh, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how loudly Joe Rogan gets booed the next time he enters a UFC ring. I mean, Joe Rogan's been around there longer than, than Trump had. Well, yeah, probably. I mean, he's been connected longer. So I don't know. 
<laughs> I mean, he does have a sense of humor. He ran into Trump and everything is cool. Granted, that is Shane Gillis, who has a, a really good uh, impression of Trump. So, yes, Donald uh, Trump then, you know, obviously he... I wouldn't call it an attack. I would say it a, call it a mild, very mild uh, razzing of Joe Rogan. And, you know, Joe's been somewhat of a Trump supporter. I mean, the guy's all over the place, except he brought all of his friends to Austin who all vote the same too. Not saying, uh, and he also, I mean, apparently there's a, there's now, there's a $30 million, <clears throat> there's a $30 million lawsuit against MSNBC. I think that's who it is. <coughs> Let's take a look. I, I know there's a big lawsuit. And uh, because they edited, he, he was endorsing Kamala Harris. And uh, it's no one knows if it's real. There's a $30 million lawsuit, but nobody knows for sure. They're, they're reporting it all over the place. But I don't know. Because there was an edit to make him appear. He was talking about Tulsi Gabbard, who he also likes, but endorsed... They twisted it to make it sound like he was endorsing Kamala Harris, which I thought was good call. Good call. You do that, Chief. Uh, but let's take a look at this. This video I just thought was absolutely killer in the idea that it kills Joe Rogan. This is, I, I'm going to try to link the channel right here. It's called uh, Elephant Graveyard. Guy did a lot of editing on this. All credit goes to him. But I just thought the worst part of his week, and I, I can't believe it hasn't gotten a little more traction, would be this. Well, that is rough. But at least he's not straight up copying Brendan's jokes, right? My life would be so much easier if I was just gay as shit. I wish I was gay. It looks way easier. We'd like play video games all day. We'd work out. At night, we'd fuck each other. You're hanging out with only guys. No one can get pregnant. That is a low that is so low where I never expected Joe to go. Stealing from Brendan Schaub. My God. He, he stole a joke from Gringo Poppy? What is going on here? God, if that is not the death knell of a comedy career, then I don't know what is. Brendan Schaub quit comedy after releasing that special, and it only stands to reason that if Joe is stealing from it, then he ought to do the same. Hey, well, you're cop into a Ugh, he just won't stop screaming. Playing sports. Maybe this joke doesn't need to be yelled. If ever these are my criticisms as well. Besides him sweating vigorously through his shirt, um, he, 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 you know, and he didn't hump his uh, he didn't hump his stool at all. I just I feel like, the, especially considering he also took some old old jokes. I need to look at one more piece here. To, uh, this one right here. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh, that is close up of the sweat. The sweat is getting real, folks. The sweat is getting real. Okay, let's let's get it here. I'm gonna steal another joke. This time from Bill Burr. This lot, when you're in your car and the light turns green, but the scooters keep coming, and you just want to go to jail. Uh, I have a lot of fucked up thoughts, man. I do. You ever drive down the street and see like 30 people up on a sidewalk, and you just think. <laughs> Now that's at least two stolen jokes in this special, so that's bad. And this is the guy who got famous for calling out Carlos Mencia for stealing jokes. If someone steals a riff from a song, that shit's in the news constantly. Yeah. Motherfuckers steal shit and make it on HBO, it Netflix, and put it on television. Not only did he steal material from Brendan Schaub, but he really just became the new Mencia tonight. I can't believe it. Talk about full circle. The shit. So I think that's pretty funny because if you guys recall, I reviewed this as well. Bill Burr did. Uh, he loves that scooter joke so much. He put it in his movie, Old Dads. There's a part where he steals a scooter and he's like, this is great. Like he loves that joke about running over scooters so much. He put it in his thing. I thought that was kind of crazy. So this is all kind of enlightening to me. It was looks like I, I, on a scale of like one to ten on worst weeks ever. I think Joe Rogan's having like a, it's like an eight. He, what he should do is not respond to any of it and just continue to move on and do his thing. But it is strange that it took him six years to put out a special, and you know he's like, oh, it's tight. I'm so happy with it. And you use old jokes that just seems like a bad idea. And if 
and I, you would think the internet would know all this and then t- telling two jokes that you may have borrowed from your friends i mean they're not exactly the most original jokes ever they're easily uh clear train of thought jokes that anybody could have picked up so i'm not gonna say he's a joke thief i think that's a little bit of a stretch but it is funny that that bill burr joke that he loves that joke which i don't even think is that funny is um he he clue because I, I didn't quite get it when i saw it in old dad so let me know what you guys think down below do you think joe rogan is having an eight out of ten week ever or nine out of ten Maybe I should have flipped it and he's only having a 1 out of 10 because, I mean, he's not the, he's, it's not very successful for him. I don't know. You guys tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I would appreciate it. We do have a full-length audio podcast. You can check it out. We do live stream here on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join the channel for as little as a dollar to help support us, help me upgrade so I don't get commercials when we talk about these things on YouTube. And uh, thanks for um, checking all this out. I appreciate you. But I'm on to the next one.